Hey, bro. That's how I do be, though. Of course, you wouldn't know that. Oh, that's cool. There might be a fight <laughs> happening during this podcast. Like, Let me know when I have to laugh. <laughs> Two more white claws. You can, you white can claws. crack my. Oh, no. no. They'll, they'll... I'll drink it. <laughs> you just crack it. I'll drink yeah. it. You're going to no, hold no, it no. up to your mic right here. Oh. So, okay. And we then we'll, we'll say, we'll we'll say three, time. two, so we'll, one, and then we'll go it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Wait a minute. No, this is, no, we do this. This is how we start the episode. Start Did you say this before you gave it to me? <laughs> I'm not doing yeah. it to you. If I get that a face full of beer. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're like, what is going on? Okay, everyone. Oh, uh, kill that light, Miss Shelly. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Dave. Right, hey. Oh. Are oh. you good? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can crack, crack that you, one. You can crack your can drink. I borrow a truly, I guess. Yeah, kind yeah. Of. Did you want a bush light, Brandon? You know what? I'll have a bush light just for you. Oh. It's a bush latte. Oh. Ooh, he bush just latte? won my vote. I'm moving to Texas just to vote there for you go. now. Okay, ready? Where's my mic? Right on your neck. Yeah, yours is on your neck. Oh, okay. Ready? I got you. I got, that was I, that's why I was touching you earlier. Ready? Three, two, one. Hey! Oh, shit. Don't. It. That's on you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Unsubscribe Podcast. I am joined today by Eli Double Fat, Fat Electrician, Grandpa Gaming, and Brandon Herrera, and myself, boy. Donut Operator. Thank you so much for watching all of our dumb content. Woo! What's up, everyone? Holy crap, shit. We can say shit. You cuss. <laughs> Not on your channel, but on this one, you will. Dude, we are so excited. Everyone is super stoked for you to come out in like a three-day notice, I think. Really? Oh, God. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Try one. Yeah, te- oh yeah, technically it was one. <laughs> what? Well, that's a big discrepancy. Like three day notice. Well, technically yes, it was like twelve hours. But well, you know, I blame Nick. Nick was like, I want to be there on that one. Can he make range day? You- I was like, uh, okay. Call what do you want call me? Gramps. I was Just, like, hey. So you're aware? It's pretty rare that all four hosts are here at the same time because we're all real busy. So we try to have two of us here, maybe three of us here. But like sometimes all four of us are like, no, we're all going to be here for this one. So, well, that's you. I got to say, I'm really overwhelmed and, and really happy to be here. But this guy right here, <laughs> this guy, I watch on YouTube all the time. Dude, that was my favorite. I was talking about him on the drive to the restaurant. I was like, oh, yeah, we got Donna. We have Brandon. We have Fat Electrician. Uh, oh, you like Fat Electrician. He's a uh, he's a <laughs> medic. Combat medic, and then he does a lot of history stuff. World War II, blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh, I've never heard of him. He walks into the restaurant, sees him. He's like, I know you. <laughs> I was like, okay. And he's like, oh, oh, perfect. I was watching you on the plane. I was like, well, well that's Nick, his best Nick friend. Nick is now. so hard right now. I know. I know. <laughs> I was watching your videos yesterday, too. So it's a, it all works out. Yeah, you're getting the chubby, huh? Yeah. <laughs> he's bricked up for gramps. <laughs> You should have watched one episode. <laughs> okay, all you young folk out there, just la 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 yeah. la. Thankfully, okay. none of them watched this. Yeah, I mean, no where they have uh, so he has a reverse. We, have, no, we do have a baby. Oh yeah, one baby we saw. One baby. We do yeah. have one baby that we saw. During the live show, we had a baby brought. Really? Like a four month old? Three three months old. Like three well, months old. most well behaved baby I've ever met. Young Didn't Dylan. cry once. The, the entire, entire show. show. It was like probably a, all the coding. In like a four hour show. <laughs> you should have been on my plane today. <laughs> that kid left <laughs> and didn't shut up until he landed. Uh, <laughs> tell Co- Cody's one of your first viral clips was on Reddit. Was oh, that baby God. just screaming. The, yeah, Cody just baby in the background. <laughs> I don't know this Really? I don't know this right. one either. No, I'm just filming my face. I think you were on the flight with me. I was filming my really? face, and I was just like, and there was a baby behind me in the seat, just. Bah! Bah! <laughs> <laughs> this is 2018, Cody. You're probably not hanging out with Brandon yet. God, yeah, that was like maybe. S- wow, what? Six years ago? Yeah, yeah right this might, we uh, met. This might have been a minute ago. It was probably right. It was probably the year we met. Yeah. Yeah, that was on Reddit because you made it to the front page on that. I was like, hey, what's up, boy? What's up, boy? <laughs> Dude, this, you, my favorite text I've ever received was from you when the first thing you said back, I was like, hey, da 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 da. Gramps, welcome. We'd love to have you out. His first question, he's like, can I bring my gun? <laughs> <laughs> then he sent pictures. And then he sent pictures of said gun. I was like, oh, this dude's dope. Also, shit. what is that? I have to ask. I, I'm. As a firearm fanatic, I, I'm I'm very curious. It's a custom built um, 
by Mike's Gun Shop in St. Peter's, 6.5 Creedmoor with a high powered night force scope on it. 22 inch barrel, dragon, uh, muzzle brake. I yeah, see a, a man of culture. Because yeah. you're a long distance shooter. Yes, I am. Yeah, you have, dude. The, the amount of stories, I was like, okay, I don't even know where to start. I was like, this is hey, gonna be like a history segment. I'm an expert marksman, rifle, expert marksman, pistol. Um, long gun is my specialty. Yeah, because so. e everyone loves your that one viral video that you did where you're like, all right, you, you, you put it up here and then headshot, headshot, <laughs> headshot. And I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> this old man fucks. <laughs> this is dropping everyone. I was like, holy shit. Because that got, I think that we sent that around our group. Yeah. Yeah. Multiple so. yeah. times. And thankfully, you're. Uh, we, now, now you're embarrassing me. <laughs> no, no, we, dude, it was seriously in our group chat. We're like, holy shit, watch this guy play Battlefield. Yeah. This dude just boom, zeroed boom, a boom, rifle boom. in combat in a video game. <laughs> yeah. Like, not only was I impressed with you, I was also impressed with the coding of the game that they even took that into consideration. That it was allowed to work. Like, oh, there's levels yeah. to video games. Oh. Well, the, the only thing they don't have in that game is windage and Coriolis. Yeah. That's it. Hey, if he knows about Corey Alex, that's why he he does like two miles. What's your longest shot? With that gun? No, in, to, in total. Period. Yeah, period. What's the longest shot you've ever done? In real life? Yeah. yeah. 1,800 plus <laughs> with that gun. Yeah, 6.5. Now, with the 6.5, it's a harder Christ. shot, well, too. Whoa, with 6.5? Yes. That's a harder. Okay, so if you don't know, like, that is a way harder shot. Just because the ballistics, it's a lighter round, and the ballistics, it's not as a heavier round. It's more stable. That's why you usually do a three three eight or. I mean, six five is a laser have, beam. It, but oh like, yeah, yeah, it is. Past a mile, anything is difficult. But to the shoot. thing, the thing with the six five is, if there's any kind of wind, um, crosswind, you better compensate for it, or you're going to be like a mile wide. Yeah. Yeah. When, when you have a spotter saying two up, three over, <laughs> just go a little bit more. <laughs> Jeez. My farthest shot ever, I think, was 1,100 yards with a 338 Lapua. And that was after spending 200 bucks of somebody else's ammo at that event. Boat, the boat I was tail. so proud of that. Like, <laughs> oh. Was it the boat tail? Probably. Yeah. Did it have a pink tip? No, I don't believe so. Mm, it's okay. custom. What's your farthest shot, Cody? Uh, the one we did at the helicopter event. I got 1,100. Oh, really? No, no. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Three, three times in a row. The, I was, I was. The range we're going to tomorrow ain't that far. Is no, it? God, no. no. Oh, no, it's Sorry. perfect. It's optimal 6.5 distance of like 55 meters. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a great, it's a great pistol and shotgun range if you're a bad <laughs> shot. Yeah. <laughs> okay. go for it. Now, if there's no one on the range, you have a little more distance because you can go backwards. But since it's like packed out, uh, yeah. You'll be, you'll be one of the most experienced shooters there tomorrow. So we're, we're, we're walking people right up to a mountain of dirt and being like, all right, even if you... Cut loose. Ugh, it's still going to... Hit dirt and not go anywhere. Oh, so okay. Our biggest it's, problem is inexperienced shooters with machine guns that after seven rounds it's anti aircraft. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah! God, we do have rain, range days tomorrow, man. I know. Yep. I'm like, oh. Yeah, where's your friend's coming home. I like shotguns. Like, what? No, like <laughs> That's long, your friend? Long yeah. range. <laughs> no. My furthest shot's a shotgun. Yeah. I mean, 25 yards. I mean, you live in medic. Iowa. Huh? You live in Iowa. I, yeah. Yeah, there's so Flat much space shit. there. Oh, okay. you can shoot down oh, the highway and oh, get 18, guys, 18 miles. <laughs> yeah, you guys, yeah. Like, you know that we're only allowed to hunt in Iowa with uh, 45 70, and that's like new and shotguns. Yeah, because it. it'll go around the planet. Yeah. <laughs> Iowa's so flat, you're not allowed to hunt with like 30 out six or anything because it'll just go for two miles really? and hit. So, yeah. Okay. You're only. Up until like five years ago, you could only hunt slug, shotgun, and bow in Iowa, and that was it. And with the lever actions becoming popular again, they finally let you hunt with straight wall cartridge. So basically, forty-five seventy. Yeah. And that's that's all you can hunt with in Iowa because it's so wow. flat there. Do that some bigger ones like some four fifty Bushmaster and stuff yeah. like that. That's that's not too bad. I mean. Ooh. 
you're still shooting a pool ball at something. It doesn't go very far. <laughs> yeah. <You're> still... <laughs> The long range shoot, especially like 1,875 feet, you're looking at like a five second delay to hear the sound. Buffering. Yeah, from that, it's like, cow. <laughs> Buffering. One, two, three, well, it's just four, like that. Five, the guy that I told you about, the, the postal rage guy that explains when he's sitting in the post office. I don't know. I, which which, which oh, was it's this? Oh, it's hilarious. Postal rage? Yeah, postal rage. Sounds he, like a, he's a postal worker. I thought that, you were talking about the UPS shooting back in the day. No, this no. is the guy that's like. Is he on the internet? That's his name. Uh, he he did a reaction video oh, okay. on TikTok, and you know he's saying, "This must be the most dangerous man in America." Uh, trust me, if you piss this guy off, he's gonna hit you from a mile out. <laughs> it's Dude. hilarious. Those guys, I would not have that name as a uh, anything <laughs> on social media. They'd be like, uh, Brian, your name's Postal Rage. You okay, bud? What? Ted Kaczynski, your name is Postal Hello. Rage. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, do you remember the guy that's sitting in the, the plastic chair and the police shoot the gun out of his hand? Yeah. Oh, He's just yeah, like yeah. chilling like this. Like the SWAT sniper. Yeah, the SWAT sniper just shoots the gun right out of his hand. He just that's all there. Yeah. Uh. Guy yeah. was, he didn't know what happened. He, He's yeah, just he like, looks up. I had well, a gun in my hand. Where'd it go? Yeah, yeah. What, what, what the hell happened? That's awesome. Ow! Yeah, that so, sucked. <laughs> so, Gramps comes from a long line of fucking warriors and military. Like, how many people in your family was in the military? Uh, my granddad, my uncle Walker, my uncle Joe Walker, who collided with the XB seventy and was killed in sixty four. My dad, then there's my wife, um, me, and my ex-wife were all military. That's crazy. My, my daughter's mother. And that's what, and it, even starting with your, like, what'd your granddad do? This fucking dope as shit. <laughs> my granddad was a World War II fighter ace, flew P-51s. Oh, nice. In the... Uh, the squadron he was in was called Bulldogs, and he flew a P-51 with the name on the side, down for double, and 16 and a half kills. European or Pacific Theater? European. Yeah. So he downed 16 planes. 16 and a half. Now, so he's a now here's, here's the so question. he's a triple ace. How do you get... A half a kill. And I have to explain this. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't, every, I didn't understand the half. Every time I say that, a half, a half a kill is when two pilots shoot at the same plane and both get hits and that plane goes down, each pilot gets credit for half a kill. Oh, that makes sense. I did not know that. Yes. I, I, I've never you heard have? that ever. Where the fuck? Yes, in my well, yeah, we don't combat fighting times. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, we so, don't, so, Grandpa helps spit roast a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> I, Eiffel towered that dude. <laughs> great, great Grandpa IRL. You want to go halves on a Nazi? Seventeenth. <laughs> <17th. laughs> so no, he, he's I, a triple ace, though. Yes. Sixteen. That's. Yeah. Fuck, that's a big deal. Being a triple fighter ace. Yeah. Oh, boy, just fucking slaying people. I, I worked in avionics. I worked on the, the green or the, the side of the Navy with, with airplanes. I've never heard a half of a kill, so that's really cool. Well, the last aces to ever come out of any war was Vietnam. No that's shit. It. Yeah. And the most after Vietnam is I think one pilot in an F-16 or an F-15 shot down three planes in Kosovo during that operation. Oh, yeah. To be fair, everybody we fought after that had difficulty understanding second-story buildings, let alone airplanes. <laughs> uh, generally <laughs> speaking. <laughs> yeah. Do we get like a real history lesson? This is about... Buildings are hard. Step aside, yeah. Nick. <laughs> this is dope. So your uh, granddad did that. He served his entire, and then he got out. He actually retired three stars. Oh, God. Yeah. So he Oof. was in the Army, right? Army Air Corps? He was in the Army Air Corps, then 
when the Army split up. Stood up the Air Force. And then it became Air Force and then Army. It used to be the United States Army Air Corps. Then in 49, I think it was 49, they split off into Air Force. Mm, Navy had the most planes, is all I'm saying. <laughs> it's Army. okay, buddy. Hey, hey, it's okay. Buddy. Guess what? Army has the most boats. <laughs> he, he's true. The army is I know. The, the army has oh. the largest navy in the world. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna fight him on this. Show at say, all. There might be a fight happening during this podcast. It's like I feel tension <laughs> right now. <laughs> He's <laughs> beating the shit out of each other. Like, dear God, not for the grams. You know he hates it when we fight. Cody, the appropriate response is, oh yeah? Well, the Navy has its own branch of the military, the Marine Corps, and it's got the fourth biggest Air Force on Earth <laughs> after our first biggest Air Force. God, the U.S. military is way too much power. We're kind of OP, dude. Yeah, super OP. Yes. So then... Don't worry, the current U.S. government is working on nerfing us. That's mm -hmm. all they do. They're doing a That's great job. Yeah. No, God. I... <sighs> Eli, wake up. Huh? I know that the ghost bed pillow is super comfortable and has cooling technology, but we're shooting an ad right now. You mean this ghost bed pillow? That With one. Cooling technology? Cooling technology. It's hot in Texas, but that's cool. Eli, I know you're cooler than the backside of a pillow, but with Ghost Bed, you don't have to turn the pillow over. It has cooling technology. Every mattress has a 20-year warranty. Some even have 25. And you can try it out for 101 nights. If you don't like it, you can send it back. No hard feelings. No hard feelings. I have hard feelings for Ghost Bed. I have a hard feeling for you. I'm really hard. <laughs> The pillows have cooling technology. And so do the mattresses. The mattresses do too. <gasps> hey, Cody, did you know GhostBed also offers bundles? Bundles? You get everything you need. Just choose from your four mattresses and pick your bundle. So whether you need a mattress and a frame, or you just want to choose it all, like their cooling pillows and sheets, you can get the best bang for your buck. Right now, GhostBed is offering 50% off everything. If you use the code unsubscribe, click the link in the description or go to ghostbed.com slash unsubscribe. That's right, ghostbed.com slash unsubscribe and get 50% off right now. The So granddad got out, dad then joined the military, and then yes. you and your dad have, what did your, your father do? He was in the Air Force. Air Force. Structural mechanic. And what's crazy about this is, what is special about you and your dad? Uh, we are one of the very few that were ever in country at the same time. He was at Da Nang. I was off the coast up at Yankee Station uh, sure, as yeah. a rescue swimmer while they were doing operations into Hanoi with the Navy. Do you guys were in theater at the same exact time. Mm hmm the rescue swimmers? So you're telling me Charlie really doesn't surf? <laughs> <laughs> welcome, the welcome. things I can do with a razor right now. <laughs> welcome to the podcast. Yeah. I was like, oh. The only thing I have to contribute here is, is a true joke, you know? <laughs> I was like... I was like, hey, you might just check out a little bit of a podcast. Not the clips. Those are usually you know pretty docile. <laughs> as long as we're welcoming him to the podcast, we have a game that we do with all of our new guests. Oh, no. Uh, we have a, our own superhero group. Oh, God. Called mm. The Offenders. Uh, you, <laughs> here's how this works. You get to pick your own superpower that you want. We get to pick the offset, the downside. So, for example... <laughs> Why are you looking at me? I'm scared. I don't know. Who I know everyone's like, because they're all uh, so offensive. Uh, <laughs> so we have really offensive super. <laughs> we have really normal superpowers until we created the offsets for said superpowers. We're really bad friends. <laughs> Terrible friends. Yeah. So you have bad a. Bad friends who like gaming. <laughs> we have, like, our entire audience base is 18 to 44 is. My superpower is telekinesis. Mm. Do we have one of those? We do. Who oh, had telekinesis? I forget. Who did have telekinesis? It might have been one of the live shows. Oh, it might. Yeah, I actually think it was at the live show. So, no. I don't none think of us remember what we said. The no, God, no. So, okay. Telekinesis. Gramps can be like, uh, 
Not with that sound, but well, stuff. should we <laughs> should we tell them our powers first? Yeah, as go, kind of, let's go over our. Let's powers. get some context. Yeah, yeah, let's <laughs> get the it. audience just like don't tell well, Gramps see, any I of can your. Slap him and not even raise a hand. Just <laughs> with telekinesis. Telekinesis. Yeah, telekinesis. Telekinesis. Oh man! I can hit you without even moving. <laughs> you just true. slap yourself. <laughs> so Cody can fly. We started there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I have an 870 shotgun. And that's no problem. <laughs> so I can fly, but I have to shout racial slurs while I fly. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so when he's trying to save me and Brandon's neighborhood, not a good air. <laughs> he brings a ladder. <laughs> Climbs up there. Burning buildings. <laughs> and he's like, oh, uh, just bring a ladder. Come on down, bro. <laughs> we're good. We're good. <laughs> Can't you fly? Um, uh, not today. No, 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 not, not today, dude. Not today. So mine is invincibility. Uh, however, <laughs> I'm constantly <laughs> myself. And I don't remember it. So I just wake up in the morning and my body is still wherever. Yeah. He's depressed, very yeah. depressed. So <laughs> the, the ceiling fan. Waking up and seeing myself floating over the ceiling fan, that's uh it's it's a little jarring sometimes. <laughs> oh. Sometimes two, <laughs> sometimes three. I uh are, I'm uh, like Professor Xavier. Okay. But only if, God damn it, I can't look him in the eye while I say this. <laughs> I forgot about your <laughs> look. <laughs> Oh, you know Professor Xavier from X Men? Sure. Okay, I'm post nut clarity man. I have his powers, but only for like the first 45 seconds after I come. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why he couldn't look me in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> Do you regret the podcast yet? I suddenly... He's like, it was an honor. He's like, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> it was I... just a. <laughs> Flash in the pan. <laughs> it, it, it's just like when people say bad jokes on my chat, I just say, let me know when I have to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to love this audience. Oh, no. The audience is going to be like, you're, oh, man, you're going to read the comments and be like, oh, all I, their audience I went on their podcast. Hey, just, just to let you know, folks, this is a great group of guys right here. I love them. For you don't this. have to lie. <laughs> 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 okay. No, it's it's what? All right. Oh, jeez. What are okay. you doing down there, Grant? He's paying me for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's fitting in real quick. <laughs> in the navy. <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> hey, dude. All right. Well. You, you oh yeah, I'm crime cuck. Uh, I can travel the speed of light, but like phase through anything for five minutes after I arrive at wherever I'm going. So really can't stop crime. So <laughs> you're saying you can write the check and intercept it before it gets there and still say it's in the mail. I could basically that's way different than we explained my thing. Usually it's, it's way more appropriate. Yeah. Way more appropriate. <laughs> Usually I'm like, man, sorry lady. I can't. Yeah, when, once he gets there, <laughs> I just watch for five he minutes. He has to watch the crime commence for five minutes. <laughs> he, bear he, witness. He, five <laughs> minutes later, he can write a really good crime report. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But yeah. he gets there and he phases through everything. Like He just can't do anything for five minutes. <laughs> okay. He can get there quick, quickly, so very quickly. I have the best superpower so far. Well, now we get to choose your offset. It is your uh, Dr. Pepper Ooh. and Cherry. Dr. Pepper with Cherry. See, now you're good to go. You. All right, what's we'll Gramps offset? Mm. Telekinesis. telekinesis. Mm. So he can make people do things anything. they don't want to yeah. do. Um, every time that you go to use your powers, the controls are either mirrored or inverted, and you don't know what they are until you go to use your power. <laughs> So like if you if you try to lift somebody up and make them go left, maybe the controls are, are mirrored and they accidentally the rules go right before the game even starts. This is, it. No, this no, is no, how no, the no, game no. is played. So you got about a twenty five percent chance you're going to do what you mean to. God, a kid is falling off a building. <laughs> <laughs> he slams him on the ground. He's trying. He's trying. The child. Yeah, he's trying to lift him up, but it's just like, <laughs> oh, the controls were backwards. Oh, my bad. that's the way it works. Yeah. Okay. Go you throw know. something in front of an object to stop a bullet. Kill somebody way. else. <laughs> this person still gets hit by bullet. And like, Crips. <laughs> it's like, okay. oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> I just Cody's. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll save, save you. Clam. Remember, folks, I was asked to come out here. <laughs> so, no, there's a building on fire and he just makes more fire. Well, <laughs> 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 a 20 for my, oh, man, that's actually really 25% chance it's going to go right. Most of the time, I'm like, please, just don't. Stop. It's worse when you do anything. <laughs> but it could be the time. <laughs> That sounds like any of us being asked to help with anything. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. <laughs> All the setup for the live shows. No, 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 it's fine. Just stay in the green room. You're, please don't. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, except for Tony's Twitter. We just burned that down oh, all day no. long. God. You Bro, be, that's, well, he, that's his offset. There's a 25% chance it goes right. <laughs> There's only two things in this world that terrify me. I, I yeah. bet I could give you a third. I don't think so. Uh, I, I believe you, but also, what if I told you that the gentleman to your right was running and winning for a seat in U.S. Congress. I can believe that. <laughs> He's got that face. Well, that nobody was the else biggest see, insult I've ever heard. <laughs> Those dang shady Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> <You've got> the, <laughs> that actually that does sting a little. <laughs> it, he has that face for a congressman. It's like oh, not trustworthy. Gramps Loki just said you have a very punchable face. <laughs> 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 It's that German word. It's uh, bag fife and gescheiss. Yeah, it's the word for punchable face. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, there's, actually, there's, there's only two things on this worth that terrify me. Death and I'm taxes. all ears. Spiders, and a woman with a gun. <laughs> Female police officers. Yes, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I never thought about that. You know. just any woman with a gun. But a woman with a gun legally? That's a different story. Did you see the acorn video? Oh, my You've God. You've never seen a woman legally with a gun? Oh, my wife, yeah. It's the only one. Is no, she dangerous? She, uh, no, she almost shot me one night. So she is dangerous? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we All 110 current, pounds of her. Current or X? No, current. Okay. What'd you do? I would, I came home. I forgot my. I worked for Motorola and I had a key, an electronic key. Came back. She's standing at the top of the stairs with my Model 19, like this. Our Rottweiler, our 189 pound Rottweiler, right there. Someone had broken into the house, and I walked in the front door. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there was, there was someone in your house? Yes. And the, the thing is, Caesar knew who it was because he did not alert. Got you. If you've ever seen a 180 that That's your guard Mexican? Rot wild oh, that's the go rot crazy. Got it. Yeah, got it. Yeah. <laughs> he he broke, used to actually have the dog whisperer. <laughs> yeah. He came in through the garage, went into the laundry room, and stole... I used to paint little miniatures for, oh, shit. for uh, Napoleonic's Wars. He stole two trays of Napoleonic's. What? That's what you're going like, to steal? Are what? They like what, he stole? Into, what? Yeah. Are they like very valuable and collectible? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. They're That's all still handmade. oddly specific. Like he would have had yeah. to have known. Well, yeah, it's we, weird that a thief would know that. Yeah. We knew who it was right off the bat okay. when they, oh. okay. when they wound say. up in Kenosha. Wisconsin for sale. Oh, I know who got these. <laughs> I might know too. <laughs> what a, yeah, like what a wildly specific thing to steal. Like if someone breaks yeah. in your house, my Napoleonic collection. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they knew. Yeah, yeah. Well, You're I was. I, I belonged to a club there, and we every Wednesday we would go down, and we big boards set out where you put out the. Napoleonic figures, French, Saxon, Baden, uh, um, Great Britain. Yeah. Just have an entire day of war there. Dude, his, like, so, Napoleon's history, if you don't, that dude was a fucking savage on how he did stuff. He was like, oh, I got, well, he killed, like, the 30,000 when he overthrew the 30,000 or 20,000, he had, like, 800 dudes or 300. He's like, oh, we just position here, 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 and here. They'll do this through the riots, and then we can pin them in and then kill them all. 
it fucking worked. That's how he got his first big promotion, I think, if I remember. Yeah. Like vaguely on that history lesson. Of course, you wouldn't know that if you watched the movie. You'd just know that he had a weird relationship with his wife because that's all they focused on the entire time. I didn't even bother watching it. I heard it's they horrible. did him so dirty. I haven't, I haven't seen it. It's yet. really bad. Don't. I heard they basically just talked shit about him and made him a cuck the whole time. Yeah, pretty much. What's the yeah. word cuck mean, Gramps? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, ah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I'm going to drink on that one. I need another beer. <laughs> it's just the chair in the corner of the hotel room. That's, that's what it means. The third chair. That, the third chair. Yeah. Grant's like, oh, I need booze. Anyways, yeah. when did you start playing video games on live stream? <laughs> when did you start playing video games, period, actually? Um, he was there it was when crazy. it was written. My <laughs> first computer game him. was 1976 called B1 Bomber. Told you. No shit. <laughs> yeah. And on a but Mac. I've been playing arcade games longer than that. What's your favorite? Pizza Hut, <laughs> the movies. With you know, you'd wait for the movie to start and be out there playing them arcade games. Like an actual arcade cabinet. Yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite of all time? Dragon Slayer. Dragon Slayer. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. It's the four. Wait, which one is Dragon Slayer? Four. Dragon's Lair. Dragon's Lair. Oh, that's one of the hardest fuck that game. This okay, Brandon. This is. Do you know this? I, I know, know the this. name. I, I yeah, don't you know. Guys, I never played it. So Dirk, these are the Dirk young the young Dragon kids. Dragon Slayer. So D Dragon's Lair is. You want to explain? It is brutal. It's you 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 have to go through the storyline, and then it begins out um, really easy. But then you get to points in the game where you have to get through that door. You like you have a checkerboard um, floor, mm. and then you you see these lights, and you have to match those lights to get to the door. And if you don't, you get fried. <laughs> this is and, and it's it's like, like, eight, is like and you have to do 86? it with the little joystick. Mm. And it was one of the first FMV games because everything was this cutscene moving yeah, into yeah. the next piece. That, and that's, F FMV? Yeah. That's the very first game that used um, cinematics. Cinematics in a in uh, an arcade game. What is FMV? Um, well, that's ah, fuck. What does that actually Full mean? Video. Full motion video. So yeah. it was you would do the combo. You'd be like up left, up up down. If you nailed it, your guy would jump through and get through the next obstacle, or he would just die, and then you have to put it yeah. in new quarters. And there was no room for error during this time frame. This is like you had 0.5 seconds. It's like, hey, this exact code, you died. New quarter. Yeah. New quarter. New oh, quarter. I must have put 1,000 quarters in that. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. The year's 2024. Do you know what that means? A new look for you. Manscaped has the 5.0 Lawnmower Ultra. That's right, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra is a man's cheat code to looking good, feeling good, and have all the confidence. Whether you're looking to maintain a trim or make sure everything's gone, this has you covered. Trusted by 10 million men worldwide. I actually use this. I endorse this. I use all their products. Equipped with two skin safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little bit off the top, and a new foil blade to take everything off comfortably. And for the dudes out there that want a full grooming experience, look no further than Manscaped's Performance Package 5.0. In that grooming kit, you get the trusted lawnmower, Manscaped's ears and nose hair trimmers, and essential aftercare products with the Crop Soother, Ball Aftershave Lotion, and Crop Preserver Anti-Chafing Ball Deodorant. Head over to manscaped.com and use code UNSUB and get yourself 20% off and free shipping. Oh, I love free shipping. Make your balls and your spouse happy. God, that, yeah, that's old school. So you grew up during the arcade period, and then your first PC was? Um, B1 Bomber on the Apple One computer. The Apple One? Yeah, I had to drive, take a bus ride 45 minutes to the Naval Amphibious Base Library where they had the computer there. So you're an OG gamer. Oh, yeah. Dude, I, I thought we well, grew see, up on video games. Nah. Right? Holy well, shit. See, my Bro, perspective, video games grew up on him. My, <laughs> my perspective of of video gaming is watching how video games evolved. And that's what makes someone in my age that understand it so good. Because you know how the game is supposed to be played. 
Especially and when, when you know how a game is supposed to be played and you see something fishy, I mean, it's instant. That ain't the way it works. <laughs> you get those old, because you grew up during the Nintendo, and this is before, I mean, there was just strategy, guys, but there was no holding your hand on those old video games. It's mm-hmm. like, you die, you yeah, die, yeah, you die. That's it. Die. Kind of like Tarkov. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> just a high learning curve. You're like, I don't know what to do. I, did, I get all kinds of people, play Tarkov, play Hell Let Loose. Hell, I can't even see the people shoot me in Tarkov. Hell Let Loose, I have to Tell run too far it. to get anywhere. <laughs> and then uh, what's what's the other one? Arma 2 oh, and 3. Arma, yeah. Arma 3, And yeah. then Squad. <laughs> I can't see the people who shoot. I, I know where the shots are coming from. I can't see them. Those are those big, what are those battles, war simulators? Open. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, like Armand. Yeah. yeah. And and one of my biggest mottos before I became Grandpa Gaming, I was known as WLR Bullseye. That was my call sign in the Navy, Bullseye. And then they made me change it. And my motto was, if I can see you, I'm going to hit you. Which I mean is a good segue. And what did you do in the military? Uh, <laughs> mostly military law enforcement. But I'm an expert rifle, expert pistol. And then you did diver? Diver, yes. And, and then what, you a rescue, rescue diver or? Well, there's a story about that. I started out on the Oklahoma City as a bosun's mate, seaman, worked my way up to becoming a rescue swimmer. And the, there were five of us on the ship and we each had shifts on <coughs> who we went out if we had to go out and pick somebody up. Then I moved on to the missile house where I was being trained to gunner's mate missile. They blackballed the missile system I was working in and transferred me to a submarine tender of all. And that's when I met Carl Bashir and Master Diver Colvin to interview for becoming a diver. Which, uh, who are those? You got interviewed by Carl Bashir. He was there at the time of the interview and I met him, shook his hand. And that was 1975. Damn. This is impressing the hell out of Nick, so I would and like to be let in on the Nick, context. What's history lesson, was, Nick? Was Carl Brashear Cuban Gooden Jr. or yes. Robert De Niro? Yeah, was, that was Cuban Gooden Jr.? Cuba, Jr.? Cuba, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cuba. Good Cuba. Jr. Cuba. Yeah. Cuba. Okay, now it's making more sense. I'm like, what? Who? Okay. Guy that lost his leg during a diving, diving. accident? Yes. Yeah. And he the, was actually on the back of uh, one of the rescue tugs when the cable snapped and uh, took his leg off. Yeah, those are gnarly. I mean. Was it was it the uh, it was the uh, resting cable for the aircraft that were landing? No, the no, snapped, no, or? no, it was on a salvage tug. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, the, the load was too great, the line snapped, yeah. and boom. Because he was the first black diver, correct? Yes, yes. So he was the first <clears throat> black diver, went through hell to get that. And I mean a living hell. Yeah. Because down then, the schools were in the South. Yep. And my school, when I went through second class diving South school, was uh, between Pier 5 and 6 at 32nd Street Naval Station. I was the last class to be trained in the Mark V diving helmet, the old school diving helmet. The old, the Holy shit, you actually was like do more that fucking yes. crazy no shit. stuff? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was, was that in Panama City at the time? Or? No. Okay. No. Um, they moved what? the second class school over to Naval Amphibious Base, uh, Coronado. Then I went to first class diving salvage school in Anacosta, Maryland. Okay. Which is where they had the old presidential yacht right there at the same pier that our diving barge was at, which is now the shooting headquarters for NCIS. No doubt. Yeah, and, and it says right there, Anacosta Naval Shipyard, right there. When you when you see NCIS. How much? Okay, go, go is it Mark Four, Mark Five? What was the helmet called? Mark Five. The Mark Five. How much did that? Just well, uniform the weight. Uh, with the weights, total of a hundred and eighty to two hundred pounds. So an Eli or a brand <laughs> just mounted on yeah. that. And the thing is that where the barge was from the water surface to the top of the barge was 12 feet. And when they 
when you come out of the water, there's a petcock here where you, on the inside, you operate it with your cheek, you open it up, and then you dip yourself in the water and it forces all the air out of that suit. Then they start bringing you up. You have to traverse that 12 feet with no air because they turn the air off. Yeah. And well, you that's gotta, convenient. You gotta, yeah, you got to traverse it slowly too. Well, they pull you in like this and you have to pull yourself, pull yourself out from the ladder when they're trying to bring you in and you take one rung at a time, one rung at a time. Yeah, because if you, and you come got, up too quick. You got 50 pounds of lead that weight. That was only 12 feet, I you think. You got 25 pounds so, on each foot. Really? What 25 weight? pounds on each on foot? On each foot, yeah. Because you're wearing so much weight, it'll fuck you up. Yeah. Really? E. Oh, yeah. No. What? The, we've, had, we've had divers just pass out because they couldn't make the 12 feet. They, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. You e. said it's the weight that does it? No, it's the lack of air. Well, I won't die. Like, so it's the well, last. He was saying you can't do it too quick. <laughs> Fuck off. He was saying you can't do it too quick. Oh yeah, because you're lacking oxygen and it weighs so much. So as you're coming up, your, you have to do it slowly. Your muscles are burning more oxygen because they're moving significantly more weight. So it's think that's, not like you can hold your not, breath that's the well. normal amount. And they're trying to hug pull you in and they do it on purpose to see how much you can take and the people that can't do it they have three tries the people that can't do it they don't pass mm. what was your scariest moment like during all of that was sorry that would be terrifying just being in the water with all that oh, the gear scariest on. moment or like yeah. what's the i feel like every military training has like its apex hard point where it's like you, you, if you make it past this point, you've made your, yeah. it's all downhill from there. What's yeah. the hardest part of that training at that time? The hardest part for me was, I guess, the classroom. Because there's so much, when you, when you come out of the classroom, when you graduate, you graduate with a, an associate's degree in oceanography. That's oh, how shit. that's how tough it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you have to be smart. Somewhat. Somewhat, yeah. Or determined. Or both. A little bit of both. Yeah. So that wait, so like Cuba Cuba Good and Junior hit that's when that video of him walking with that one leg, because that what's his real name? Carbusher. 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 So when he's actually doing that test, that's actually what happens. Like, hey, yes. you have to do five steps or three that steps. That actually happened. But his suit That's cr so was a helium suit, which weighs about 280 pounds full. So Brandon, so 280 pounds, but he has one leg on a nub. Leg. Yeah, so that Could pressure on it. Could you guys imagine putting, like, like you're squatting, put three plates on each side, and you have to take like five steps with that with yeah. one leg. And all that pressure on that. And this is not like now where you're like, hey, we can fucking drill a titanium rod into your femur. It's yeah. way better. This is OG prosthetics yeah. where all that pressure is yeah. put on one point. Homeboy was... God dang. That's fucking crazy to it, me. One of his pictures is honestly like one of my favorite pictures of all time. There's a picture of him later in his career after he had his amputation and everything where he's sitting down in the chair... And he's just looking over and they're, they're like, they're either just taking the helmet off him or about to put it on. And it's like, oh, oh, that's the that, one where they're taking it off. Yeah, that's after he made the walk. And then he had to walk back to the chair, sit down, and then they took his helmet off. It's one of those pictures where it's like, oh, that's the main character. <laughs> it's fuck, it's a badass picture. Dude, that's crazy. <laughs> and then he was so he was the first. Black diver, and then he he kept his he kept his um, diving status. Diving status, yes. Because because they were trying to restrict it because he well, like, if, you know, if like, you no. if you look on the picture that I showed you, you'll still you'll still see he's got the diving pin with the tridents and the dolphins. Oh, he's a determined that's motherfucker. One, that's one it. of my yeah. favorite pictures. Well, that's, in that's military history. Yeah, that's not. That's an specs. early picture. Yeah, that's an early picture. 
I think that's on the tugboat where he actually lost his leg. Joe, this, oh, this is going to be one of my favorite podcasts. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so... Thank you, by the way, for saying Scooby Doo villain because that immediately. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh no, yeah, 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 the, the giant about. helmet. You're like, oh, that makes way yeah. more sense. So, how what is the deepest you went in your diving apparatus? Four hundred and twenty feet in the recompression oh, chamber. Fuck no. Now Dude. my my <laughs> Dude, like no. my class uh, graduation dive was three hundred and twenty feet in Point Loma, off Point Loma in. Uh, just outside the kelp beds, uh, near uh, there's a trench there that goes like three thousand eight hundred feet. But what they do is they take two boats out. They drop a lead clump here with a rope over to this lead clump. That's three hundred and twenty, three sixty. I think one class even went three eighty. So you go down, you go across, and this is in scuba, not the hard hat. You go across, and then you come up. And then when you come up, you go like this, diver okay. And then they set you on the boat just for uh, 20 minutes. If you get the bends, you're going to know it. And then it's Hobby Lob after that, after everybody graduates. And what is the bends really quick for people that don't know? It's when you get nitrogen buildup in the blood and you get bubbles, and I still get this to this day, my ears and my nose will get like nitrogen feeling coming out of that, out of my ears. It's a tingling sensation when the nitrogen starts to leave the thin parts around the nose, the corners of the eyes, the ears. The thin layers of epidermis. Yeah. Bro, that is... And it's a killer. Yeah, this is... And it's why you're not supposed to fly. Like, I forget how many hours when after... You're not supposed to fly 24 hours after uh, you dive. And you're not supposed to dive 48 hours after you come off a flight. Otherwise, you die. Well, you there's a possibility, yeah. Unlike yeah. me, I came off a flight, got to Guam. Eight hours later, I was in the water. But I didn't go below 32 feet. So you're safe up until, God, I have so many. <laughs> like, I don't even, <laughs> this yeah. world is so foreign to any of us. I'm like, yeah, you talk about war, I just there, got you, There's bro. a rule God, in like, the Navy diving. It's, and the Navy uh, diving units are the world's foremost leaders in safety. Most of the, you got Nowie and Patty out there that are, diving associations where do they get all their information from navy diving schools and diving med schools because they are the leaders out there for diving safety the number one rule is 60 for 60 60 feet 60 minutes that's it but you can dive 28 to 30 feet forever my longest dive is three hours and 20 minutes at 22 feet in Guam, 89 degree water. So when you, you go, you? like your 400, how, what was your deepest? 420 in, in the con recompression chamber. And then you just like all the way down. Is, what is that like with, how many tubes are leading up to the water for breathing? Well, no, the, the recompression chambers, they put 12 people in the chamber. Then they put a bucket with a styrofoam class, uh, glass of water in the bucket. Then they take you down 420 feet. And we're all in a circle watching this uh, glass get from here oh my to God. here. Fuck that. Miniature. And then <laughs> I said something like, Oh, that's cool. Because you're 420 feet and you're breathing helium. <laughs> Everybody in there lost it. I mean, it was Giggle City. We just lost it because I said, oh, that's cool. 
<laughs> you sound like Cartman down there. <laughs> yeah. No, you're, you're just you're bringing back a lot of memories to me, man, because I memorized the Navy diving diving manual like uh, in 2010 uh-huh. because I was I wanted to be a Navy SEAL. And so I memorized the whole thing. Like I went to Bud's for like a couple of weeks. So you're just like bringing back all sorts of memories to me about the Navy Here's diving my manual. Breaker. What? Lieutenant Commander Richards was the commanding of second class diving salvage school. He's a SEAL. Mm-hmm. Two of my s- classmates were SEALs. Mm-hmm. After I graduate from second class diving salvage school, I went to Commander Richards and said, I want to go to Bud's. And he looked at me and he goes, why now? I said, because I want to go to Bud's. He said, they're not going to take you. I said, why? I could run the mile in less than a minute and a half. What, what are you doing? And, he, and he, he said, if you'd applied for Bud's first, we would have put you through. But now you've cost the Navy $280,000 in training and to be a diver. Yeah, you were a good they're diver. They're not <clears throat> going to put you through buds. <laughs> Makes a lot. And then after that happens, where do I go? Military law enforcement for the rest of my career. You know what I like doing all day? Being on my phone to do stuff. Ordering food. Looking at stuff I shouldn't be looking at. You know what the scary part is? Little phone carriers, they collect your data. Verizon's even admitted to it. They say it's to understand my interests better. But really all they're trying to do is sell your interest to other advertisers. The more they can get on you, the larger their paychecks get. Which is why I use ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is an app that prevents your phone carriers from being able to see the sites you visited and selling it off to third parties. All it take, one tap of a button, and all your network data is then encrypted and rerouted to ExpressVPN secure service. For ultimate privacy, ExpressVPN protects all your network data, even while you're using your favorite apps. Whether you're an iPhone, Android, or even a tablet, ExpressVPN works on all devices. The best part, one subscription can be used up to five devices at once. When your phone carrier tracks you, it's a gross invasion of privacy. Now you can keep letting them cash in on it or visit expressvpn.com slash unsub to get the same VPN that we all use over here at unsub. Take back your online privacy today and use this code to save yourself three months for free. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S VPN dot com slash on sub U-N-S-U-B. Joy. <laughs> but then you have like baller stories from that because you're like, oh yeah, here's where I took a round through here. Here's a machete that hit my fucking hand. Wait, what? Wait, oh, so, yeah. so you went from a <laughs> you went from a diver to a master at arms? No. Okay. Military law enforcement's a lot different. Armed forces police. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm a master at arms. I'm going to slap you in the back of the head if you look at me cross-eyed. Right. No, we don't do that. <laughs> yeah. So you did the actual cool stuff. Yeah, so you yeah. were in Guam? Guam. And you were doing police. My last five years was, is in Guam. And then you were doing, uh, you said you were doing recoveries, and then you were also doing... Machete story. <laughs> I'm still stuck on the machete. Yeah, machete honest. story. Yeah. He was like, oh, I'm driving. He's, he's like, look at this. Okay. I'm like, I'm driving, sir. See that scar right there? Yeah. We went to arrest a uh, serviceman. And uh, when we got there, we arrested him. And then his wife came out with a machete. And uh, you know the old thing where I'm going to catch this blade. Oh, I caught the blade all right. <laughs> <laughs> This way. (laughs) You called it. Yeah, I caught it. And it's this finger and this thumb have total loss of feeling. Really? Yeah. Oh. So, and it, if if I do it right, you'll see the the very tip, it'll quiver. See that? Well, so now that's interesting because that brings me back to gaming. How does that affect you for your, I guess, your career now? Muscle memory. Yeah? That's it. A lot of people don't believe uh, because of the titanium plate in my neck. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can see the scar right here. Yeah. Mm. Right yeah. there on that line. Six inch titanium plate in my neck. Uh, if I sit in a chair like right now, I have no feeling from the shoulders down to fingertips and both arms because of the swelling around 
the cervical spine. What happened there? Was it just like, oh, just... Uh, it was an injury I received when I was working for a communications company. Like, hey, he fell or something like that. Actually, it was kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> Let me tell you about the time I almost <laughs> no. broke my neck and died. And an office chair. Fuse it by titanium. Okay. An office chair. The, the, um, there was a lever in the front where if you push that lever, the chair goes like this. So I just come back from the bathroom, push myself up, and the chair went, boom, shot me under the desk. And then the back of the rest and my chin, see these teeth right here? Yeah. Caught me and ruptured three vertebrae, oh, or three discs in my neck. Jesus. We're all, wow. I, you, you I hung there for about 30, mm -hmm. 40 seconds until the, the lady next door came over and kicked the, the wall down where the chair was hooked onto and released me. So you, you spend years diving without many injuries, and then you do the military police thing, but then the chair fucked you up. Yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> how Stop playing around in there. <laughs> 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 Just that's, that's, basically, like that's basically what it was. I couldn't, I couldn't talk because uh. the, the chair had me pinned like this, and all I could do was I could pound on the desk like this. And she got up to see what was going on, and she... She just kicked out the little wall and saved yeah. my butt. That's how I do be, though. <laughs> that, you know? that is how it do it's be, a, though. Yeah, it's not going to be diving or combat <laughs> or machetes or anything. It's the chair gets you in the end, dude. I'll, I'll shout out one of my boys. Uh, it's Fitty Tactical, 50% Tactical. Uh, he uh, He's uh, like a former, like I think, an SF guy. I forget. It's been years, but he, uh, he ha only has one arm. And so, like, you know, the joke, fitty, fitty tactical. Like, I get it. And plus, he's, like, half white, half black, so it, like, works two ways. He's, like, he's kind of a, he's a funny guy. But, uh... He better be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it helps, I'm sure. But, no, he, uh... He only got, he got that injury. Uh, he did, like, a couple of tours and things like that and, like, did, like, did the whole military gamut and then came home and lost the arm in an ATV accident. Oh, wow. Had an ATV roll over him. Dude's always, that's how, like, a lot of, mil I mean, Clint, our boy Clint. Yeah. That is what happened to him. Uh, Clint was, um. Trial? Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Clint I trial. I say trauma or yeah, trial? Yeah, yeah, Clint trial. Which, which one of our buddies who lost limbs? Clint trial is very up there in <laughs> special forces stuff, like, above that. Um, I don't know if we can talk about it, so I'm not saying what he did. <laughs> <laughs> Until I get okay from some him. Stuff. Yeah, he did really gangster shit. Sounds alpha group. You, you like he, you a, yeah. <laughs> there's Delta and there's a couple other little things. <laughs> he did are, some stuff. Yeah. So it was his like one of his last deployments and missions. He goes out, Humvee, drives, explosion, loses both his legs. Like one of his last final missions. Like boom. That's the way it always works. Yeah, and mm -hmm. he, he, what, he was a war fighter for like 25 years. Yeah, like. Homeboy had been doing war, war. Yeah. Like war, war for 25 years with nothing up to that point. And then just bad luck bears. One day that happens. It's still like one of the kindest humans, just positive outlook on I life. Love one we, of the nicest people you ever meet. Yeah. We took him skydiving like a year ago. And that was one of the cool things, watching him jump with his team that he used to deploy with. So he, you surprised him with him, right? Yeah. Like, he didn't know they were all going to be there. So it was an actual really... And Clint had not went uh, free fall since the accident. That's what he used to do, if that shows you how high oh, yeah. level yeah. he was as halo diving. You're like, oh. So he got surprised with his team being there. And he's like, hey, this is your first jump. The first jump back since the accident, here's your team, and they're jumping with you. So it was a beautiful moment. It was all captured on camera. Clint, you fucking ate shit when you landed, bro. <laughs> Harder with no legs. <laughs> <laughs> like, you were like, flare, and bye. And he's like, fuck that sucked. <laughs> like, he just yelled out when he... <laughs> But he killed it, dude, and the, like the level of just his buddy supporting him. It was a beautiful thing to watch, that camaraderie. And you're like, hell yeah, and he was... So, so he he actually jumped. He didn't tandem. Oh, yeah, he jumped, jumped. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. I, I was thinking you were talking about tandem. No, homeboy, like... Dude, I was so pissed. <laughs> I remember we were doing the air tunnels, 
And I look like a bag of shit in the air tone <laughs> at this point because free falling is not easy. It, it takes time to get control of your body. You think it's easy. It's, it is not. And then Clint gets in there and he's like, oh, okay. I was like, that's no fair. You don't got no legs. He's cheating. <laughs> and he's just like floating around perfectly. I was like, fuck, dude. I get in there. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> Trying to control my body. It's like, I'm going to die on my first free fall. This is how this goes. But uh, he had it down to a science. And then watching his him and his team do that. It was one of the dope, dopest moments I've seen in recent years. You have to meet that dude. Also, Clint Romas Shea sent me a video. Oh, no. I haven't watched it yet. I was like, I'm going to wait for the boys because oh, we were geez. texting oh, him. No. Yeah, I have no idea what he's going <clears> to <throat> say. We might have to bleep this. I don't know. Miss you too, buddy. You guys look like you're having a good time. Me and my uh, second youngest kid just got done with golf practice, so now it's time in the hot tub and uh, relaxing with some vodka seltzers. Rocking the high noons. It's a tough life. <laughs> Best, best job I ever had, best dude. Best dude, Medal of Honor recipient. Was <laughs> oh, that the guy? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's not that's not Clint Trial. That's, no, uh, that's our no, other no. buddy. That's Clint Romashe. Yeah, 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 Clint Romashe, the Medal, Medal of Honor recipient I told you about. So he's the one that, uh, what was his what's battle? What's his from? last name? Romashe. Romashe. He did the battle of, what's his book? God, I'm a shitty mm, friend. I, Hold on. I know this Talk also. about Romashe. Book. Battle of... Red Platoon. Okay. So Red Platoon is the, um, that, they got screwed. Battle of uh, Camdish. It was when they were in a U.S. government being U.S. government. They're so like, hey, we're going to put this base in a bowl. I've never read The Art of War <laughs> yes. or seen Star Wars Episode Three. i I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to occupy the low ground. <laughs> It's over, Afghanistan. I've got the high ground. Yeah, it's, it's over. Fucking, yeah. It didn't work great. I know this. It's over, America. I have the high ground. <laughs> like, no. Jumps. They, so, yeah, they were they they decided to put it in a bowl surrounded by, by mountains. On every <clears throat> which way. Clint took, I think it was an RPG rounds, called for fire on himself. Like, homeboy was a goddamn warrior during yeah. the entire thing. And one of the kindest humans you will ever meet. Period. We're super excited to have that dude on. You know what makes me so happy right now? It's like GWAT meets Vietnam, and it's it's cool conversations. Dude, is it like your conversations are insane to me? I'm like, bro, you're like, I got the Mark V helmet. I had a tube going up to air. I'm even thirty feet. The with best. The best part is him shitting on 12-year-old kids in Battlefield. <laughs> I don't care what she says. The best part of the story is the happiest ending. Just grandpa gaming. Like, I was there when the magic was written. A lot of these kids. Let me show you how to actually play video games. A lot of these kids who are going to be fighting World War Three are currently getting shit on by the <laughs> well, Especially if you're shitting on Chinese kids in Battlefield. They're definitely going to be fighting yeah. World War Three. <laughs> Well, when, when, it, hey, you come China? No. <laughs> of Korea? No. They're, they're uh, good. Russia? <laughs> no. <laughs> Fought the Chinese once, didn't love it. <laughs> Have you ever tried to break a bad habit and it just felt like you're climbing Mount Everest in flip flops? We have all been there, everyone. But here's a breath of fresh air fume. It's not about giving up, it's about switching up. Fume simply takes your habit and makes it better, healthier, and a whole lot more enjoyable. Fume is an innovative, award-winning, air-flavored device. Instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. Instead of electronics, fume uses natural nature. It uses air <laughs> powered by your lungs. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses delicious flavors. You get it, instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Mine's at the unsub house and I'm not there right now. Fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and movable parts and magnets. Gives your fingers a lot to do if you're trying to de-stress. Now on a personal note, it is extremely weird having a device that is operated by your lungs and the air around you and it tastes good. <laughs> so go start that good habit over at tryfume.com slash unsub to save 10% off the journeyman pack today. So when you got, what was it like, 
a first person, was it always first in person shooters your game style? Or were you like, hey, I like to do RPGs, JRPGs? Actually, I, I play a lot of different games. Uh, hunting games, zombie games. But what do you, what do you, first what do you, person shooters is where I excel. What I are you playing right cry. now, though? What's your game right now? 2042. You're really still. Yeah. Okay. That's your jam? Oh, yeah. Because that game sucked on release. You said it earlier. You yes. were like, that game is trash. I told him, should I buy it now? If I'm playing it, you buy it. If if I don't enjoy it, I won't play it. We all so, played it for like a week and gave up. Well, that's because of the release. If you play it yeah. now, it's a totally different game. Really? Yeah, now it's yes. actually, they refined it. Unfortunately. They- and for me, it's even worse. When I first started playing 2042, after the second time I played it, was great. I was getting kills from 1,400 meters out. Then I posted the viral video on how to zero your weapon in game. Well, as being a recon in 2042, one of the few that excelled in it, do you realize how many sniper recon came out after that video? So you fucked it up for yourself in accident. I fucked it up for myself (laughs) big time. (laughs) Because everywhere I looked, I saw a scope. Oh, look, he's over there. In one of my videos, I got, oh, there's two snipers over there. Oh, there's four over here. Oh, there's six over there. And they're still shooting in the same spot I am. You were dro- but you dropped those guys, didn't I you? I did. <laughs> I remember that clip. That's the one I seen, too. You're like, there's two right there. You see little glimmers. Gramps is like, <laughs> just exploding heads. I'm like, God damn. That man's a fucking hard ass. Yeah, no wonder he likes 6'5 Creed more. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> what was your first first person shooter that really got you into? Medal of Honor. The- oh, my boy. Oh, okay. Like, first one or PlayStation? Rising Sun? No, Medal of Honor. The first okay. one. PlayStation? Yeah. OG. No, actually PC. Wait, they're really metal. Hard? I don't play yes. first-person shooters they're on so console. Good. Oh, they were so good. What's the Metal, metal of Honor, Honor and PC? Metal of Honor Rising Sun were both fantastic. Oh, you're talking about the uh, one that was the first one into uh, like GWAT. Yeah, the, right? the GWAT one, right? That one was badass. Yeah, the very first release of Medal of Honor. Uh, then after Medal of Honor was the first Call of Duty World War II. Mm. Uh, World of War. World of War. Uh, Yeah. And then the best first-person shooter ever, ever to be made was called Joint Operations. Why does that sound familiar? Never even heard heard of that. that. Yeah, Joint Operations. Was that a middle? It lasted for two years. They shut down the servers because of the cheaters. The, the. Uh, let's see, unknowncheaters.com. They were putting out every week the cheats to de- defeat the game, and the makers of joint operations said, uh, let's just shut down the servers because it's costing us more money to defeat it. This came out in 2004. Yeah. This no, is that OG. Wasn't, that wasn't yeah. a Medal of Honor game there. Right? No, no, it was just it joint was operations. No. It came on like a uh, DVD. Oh, I rem- oh yeah. God, I remember that. I... Yeah. God, this is unlocking a memory for me. I remember finding that in a foreclosure from a fucking former uh, military guy in Fort Bragg. So I used to do real estate shit. I used to that go through like real estate foreclosures. Was the best first person shooter PvP game in my mind to ever be released. And if they re- if they redid that today, you can say goodbye to PUBG 2042. I'm going to go and buy every copy others. on eBay real quick before this podcast gets <laughs> released. <Yeah. laughs> that, that's how good it was. It, it, it was that good. Dude, to not oh, accidentally yeah. fuck the, yourself the up. The ghillie suits that the recon wore, you couldn't see them. They'd be laying on the side of a hill. You couldn't see them. And the only time you could detect them is if you were looking at them in binoculars. And you know how the, uh, the predator scene was where you... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, that's yeah. how those... Those ghillie suits worked. That's gangster. We have, like, because we play. I'm a Warzone person. Brandon's a Tarkov slash Cyberpunk 
Now hell divers, man. Hell divers. Oh, hell, is, yeah. yeah hell I divers. think we all kind of got into hell divers recently. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm I'm hell divers too. You do? But you play hell divers? Oh yeah. For you democracy? Sure. Yeah, For democracy? Right. For, they, play hell you divers haven't seen grass. it yet? No. It's on one of my clips. I Dude, played it. Put I'm it going, up right here. <laughs> I'm, I said, democracy. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> what level are you right now? Ninety something, maybe. Wait, no, 50? that's Fortnite. Okay. No, I'm yeah. hundred and something in Fortnite. I'm eighty or ninety. Fifty is max. I think fifty is max right now. I like, Helldivers. I think, yeah, Helldivers. Yeah, I'm twenty. Actually, and now I'm like, bro, did they update or patch? I have no idea. Helldiver. Wait, what level are you, Brandon? Twenty-four. Oh, you see, I'm like eight still. Me and Cody played that one. Oh, we played all one ass. time. I was like, ah. Level two, level. Which this, we need this, Nick this to get on. TikTok guy. Okay. He's like, hello. Hey, bro. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> the greatest hey, we're doing the ever. podcast right now. What level am I in uh, Helldivers? You're doing what right now? We're doing the podcast right now. Uh, what level are you? Yeah. Uh, Twenty-eight. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Tell him unsubscribe says hello. Unsubscribe says hello. What's his name? Yeah, it's Father Coffee. Father Coffee. Father Coffee. Yeah. We say hi. Hey. I just like you were like, hey bro, what's up? <laughs> hey, speak what's to up? the guys. How's it going? Oh, hey, good. How are you? Oh, we're great. What's up? Did you get? Or we'll blurt that. <laughs> hey, did you get the pictures of who I was with? Yes, sir. Yeah, I was watching his video on the flight for crying out loud. <laughs> uh, I'm happy for you, brother. Okay. All right. Hey, hey have a great day. don't drive and use your phone at the same time. No, no, never. Okay. It's un-American. All right, brother. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I got to live with on stream. <laughs> I'm sure they're going to have a problem with that too, right? Okay, bud. <laughs> All right. Love you. Bye. Let it go off. Bye. He's hilarious. This That's is my favorite conversation I've ever heard. It's like, hey, bro, is, what's up? I'm like, bro. This, this what is, level am I in fucking hell there, dude? <laughs> As he's just shitting on kids. I don't even know what level I am. I just, I just know it's higher than yours. <laughs> Well, no, he's shitting on bugs <laughs> yeah. for democracy <laughs> and robots. I'm, uh, I think, like level ninety eight in Fortnite. That's because I played Fortnite. Fortnite last night. Those are the ones I don't think any of us. And then my wife going, "Hey, you got to go to bed. You got a flight in the morning. Come on, another hour. I, <laughs> I, I want to sell." I need one more win. <laughs> one more win. Look forward to. How long have you been streaming? Because you did it full time, right? Yes. How long have you been streaming full time? I started streaming in May of 2015. Full time. Full time. What was, what, what was your wife's understanding of what streaming even was, and how hard of a conversation was that to explain to your oh wife? Oh my God. <laughs> Please. I got wasps in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, how did you bring this? Like, what do you say? Because you're, uh, you're okay. in your seventies, <laughs> full time. In seventy-one. I'm seventy-one. Seventy-one. So you're just like, yeah. hey, oh, twenty. Wow. Oh, just for the record, like full time streaming in twenty fifteen is a big. That's early. None that's of, almost none of us did that. That's no. really early. Nope. You're almost on. Uh, not twisty. Uh, that was on, almost Justin TV. Justin TV. You're you're probably one of the first people to be a full time streamer at 2015. I, I don't think the audience could have guessed which one of us was the first full time streamer. First full time content creator. Yeah. Shit. Well. But getting back to what my wife says, <laughs> I'm upstairs. Now don't laugh. Okay. I don't want to hear any laughs in the background there. <laughs> Are you gonna go down there play play time? With play play. He said no laughs. <laughs> With play play time. I see you, Dave. Going the down games. to the computer. Play play time. She goes, oh, you're going to go play play time. 
I said, no, honey, I am an LLC now. This is fucking work. <laughs> Your first thing is, I'm a fucking LLC now. I am a professional. <laughs> this is yeah. a job, babe. And I think Dell flew us out to New York to do the commercial for their Christmas in 2016. Wait, I'm sorry. You're doing commercials for Dell in 2016? Mm hmm yeah. Jesus. Jesus, dude, he beat us all to it, He's right? He's flexing on us at every possible angle. I yeah. <laughs> Subtly, too. That's, that's, that's awesome. when she baggage on board. Okay, this, this could be good, you know? They flew us out there for two days, did a commercial. Five uh, episode commercial. What did for, you do for the commercial? Um, they were releasing their new 17-inch a uh, laptop for gaming, and uh, I didn't get to keep it, but it was, I did, uh, <laughs> the fuck down. I was, yeah. Yeah. What the fuck, I was, what's well, up? Here, here's the bad thing, I, they, they made me an honorary member of one of the teams there, and they brought out a jersey, I didn't go home with that jersey, That's oh, they just bullshit. handed everything and then took it back, yeah, Oh man, dude, Bullshit. fuck that. Yeah, fuck shady Del. as shit, bro. Well, they they did. We, we're never getting a Dell sponsorship <laughs> yeah. ever. Oh yeah, like we fucking wanted one in the first place. Right? I did. Oh, I so did get a computer and fucking take oh, it back. Did? Yeah, I did <laughs> get a computer. At least. An a alien, one? an alien gear. An we're alien fifty-one. Alienware. Okay. It fried in six months. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Del, Del just round of applause for Dell. Dell oh, just fucking killed it today. Well, I just like they're like here's the jersey and this. Okay, thank okay, you for the photo back. op. <laughs> That's pretty shitty. Well, we had a good time. I mean, uh, four star restaurant and a nice hotel. The Trump, the old Trump Tower. We were in. All right, Dell, you're back on the table. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I want to talk, touch base is your miniature paintings. Like, how intricate do you do? on this stuff. You really want to know? Yeah. Don't, don't bring this up. <laughs> he's, doing, he's doing the Bismarck, not the USS Iowa. No. Just, no uh, what's, also, what's, I want to know your favorite uh, moment of Nick's history, like oh, one of your no. favorite. Okay, yeah, we can do that. That's a really good one. What's your favorite episode with the fat electrician? Oh, man. I guess to think about it. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I've watched so many of them. <laughs> You're so proud of yourself. Yeah, I, I watched the one on the plane this morning. Ching Lee, USS Washington. Yeah. Yeah. Did you uh, make a particular joke during that episode? No. Okay. no only on you the did live the live episodes. Oh, okay. Only on the live ones. Okay. Oh, those are dope. Oh, you do 40K too? Mm hmm. Oh my boy, me and him would get a, dude. He's doing forty k. He, he paints miniatures. He's like, yeah. all right, well, yeah, we should have seen that coming. To be fair, okay, I paint. I do. I, I do, do scale modeling too. Yeah, I've I got do a one two hundred miniatures. Bismarck that I'm doing right now. Mm. <laughs> Did you just moan or groan? Mm. <laughs> the Bismarck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've I think also Nick, ordered the one two hundred scale hood. I think it's better. Nick has a, an axe to grind about the Bismarck. Although I do love the Sabaton song. Mm. Oh, that was... Dude, you a big Sabaton fan? Well, I'm more of a Johnny Horton well, fan you know. for Sink the Bismarck. What's, yeah. it, what's wrong with the Bismarck? <laughs> I, I'm just sick of hearing about it. I, ultimately, like, his biggest, best German battleship, but I... Give a history I, lesson. Oh my God. We want it a history Built to lead the German war machine and the Kriegsmarine, yeah, motherfucker. It, it led itself all the way to the bottom of the yeah, ocean. Yeah, it totally did. It, <laughs> I don't it's know just the is, internet. It's, there's three battleships that are the best battleships on the planet. There's the USS Iowa, the Iowa-class battleship. Oh, wow. So I US, wonder why you the, have a fucking fuck bias, off, it's, not even, it's not even that. Like, the USS Iowa is honestly the least <laughs> impressive one. So, like, you have, the, you have the USS Iowa, the USS New Jersey, which sank a fucking island during Vietnam. Didn't know that was possible, but it did it. Then you have the USS Missouri, uh, Mighty Mo, and then you have the USS Wisconsin, which is famous during the... Um, 
Korean, Korean War? War. Korean War yeah. for the temper temper incident when they just fucking deleted an artillery emplacement. Um, yeah, that's that's <clears> when <throat> uh, the Washington was hit by a 155. And the captain said, make that battery disappear. And in a full broadside, it was gone. Well, <laughs> yeah, which one is your favorite story of like, History time, Nick, just when you're getting your history lessons, you're like, oh. Um, I actually liked, and I saw this on YouTube three nights ago, the night the U.S. fleet came down the channel at Iron Bottom Sound and the Kirishima was coming up ha. and it was night and they just opened up. Stand aside, I'm coming through. Yeah. This is Ching Lee. And this is yeah. Fuck up everybody. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah. But that was the same night they lost the Atlanta. Yep. And the... Um, oh, they the, lost like three destroyers that night. They lost um, three destroyers, the Atlanta. South and, Dakota had electrical issues. Yeah. We didn't lose it, but it was um, dead in the water. Oh, CA-50, I could see that. She sank also. Um, oh, did? CA-50. Um, I can't... No, what I is what this? Is. Hold on. This is just... The history. Helena. Gotta consult it the was the Helena. Yeah. Yeah, they lost the Helena. There. You guys could do videos together. <laughs> just start bouncing old ideas. I was just like... This is well, dope. they shouldn't start a podcast or the rest of us are <laughs> fucked. <laughs> Do you guys do you guys play World of Warships? Uh, I play a different game with ships. They sponsor my videos sometimes. Oh, they do. Yeah. I was gonna say I will play World of Warships if they I decide to give it me money. I have played before. Yeah. When they sponsor me, I play them sometimes. What's, what's, I also play yeah. uh, War Thunder. Oh, that, yeah. So yeah. What, what's the Hummer that we shot at the last range? World, of Warships. World of Warships. Oh, Is that yeah. the ones who sponsored that? Yes. Yeah. The the Hummer. Oh, shit. Being never mind. Maybe I will fucking play the game. We destroyed a it was like a ninety thousand or a hundred. It was like a hundred and ten thousand yeah. dollar Humvee H one. Yeah, that happened. Oh yeah, you don't know. So this is there's always something that's going to be like shot, blown apart. I went to demolition school in the head, Maryland. Thing. Can I blow something up? You Perhaps blow. tomorrow, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't think you. I, <laughs> I can see it now. Gramps with C four in his hand. Uh. Uh-uh. I name, don't want to go there. Name a machine gun that you wish you were able to shoot ever. Any any machine gun that ever was right exist? There. The Thompson. Oh yeah, we have, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've we got that. Name another one. The Ma Deuce. Got It'll that. be there tomorrow. Yeah. Name another one. <laughs> this, was, this was last we're, year. We're we <laughs> talked about this. Yeah, we're not <laughs> fucking with you right <laughs> now. No, we're not fucking with you. <laughs> that was the H one that we just lit up. Now I know where my H one went. <laughs> <laughs> Na- name name a, another one. Name another machine gun that you wish you could shoot. MG42. We'll yeah, have got one. one. Yeah. Name another one. All right, now I'm getting hard. You know? <laughs> <laughs> He's revving to go. <laughs> you can go back to World War II. You can get historical with it. Any um, gun you can think of. World War One, Two, Vietnam, Korea, anything. How about the Russian 12.7? I've got one currently being rebuilt. The Dishka? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it technically could fire if we put it back together, but it I wouldn't. Safely. The rebuild was sketchy. <laughs> Man, we know a guy that killed people with the Dishka. Yes, we, we do, do actually. Yeah, we do, actually. <laughs> He's going to be on the podcast soon. Yep, I'm excited for that That's going to be a good one. We have some doubt. Like, <laughs> I told you. I was like, you name a gun. I would love to take him to my fucking factory. You don't, oh, dude. It's, yeah. it's going to be about 15, eight foot long picnic tables. All machine guns of every, from World War I to now. Every machine gun that you could pretty much imagine is going to be there. And, and all the ammo, uh, the, the ammo is paid for. Vickers? What's up? Vickers? Yeah, the, uh, well, so I don't have a Vickers technically, but I've got a Maxim. So basically the same three thing. Three. Yeah. Uh, it's not 303, it was chambered in 762 by 54R because it was a finish made one, but it's the same same operating mechanism. Okay. Lewis gun. Yep. Yeah. I told brother, I told I you. Like to, when I, I told to, you, I tried <laughs> to tell you you're gonna get to shoot all these tomorrow. Oh, I'm telling you on the phone, I was like, whatever you want. P90. 
Yep. Yeah, we yeah, all have that's one. That's an easy one. MP5. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we all have one of those. We, we have the. We have the. <laughs> the don't S- you have the? You have the integrally suppressed one. The S- from yeah. the fact I've got the P90, the MP5, and Am the MP5 SD. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else? What else you got? <laughs> I wanted my rifle to be the showcase. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's going to look cute. <laughs> yeah. But then it's going to sit next to everything there, and you're like, fuck. Dude. Legitimately, if there is something that you want to shoot specifically tomorrow, just let us know. We'll bring it out. Because we, we've got a, a couple of the fan favorites that we're bringing I'm out. Sorry. But you're okay. We, we've got a couple of the fan favorites it's, we always bring out. Grandma taking Bonnie out, then, by the way. Yeah. Like some angels are getting their wings. Yeah. Every, every gun you could want will probably be there tomorrow. <laughs> you can shoot it. Yep. See, there's your grandma. <laughs> oh, sure enough. Yep. Because this is going to be the most wholesome this is the podcast. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the most wholesome. <laughs> the most wholesome podcast we have ever done. Hey there. He froze at the door going. <laughs> Wait, did you just scare you? I just scared <laughs> you. Fucking with his wife on the blink camera. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, Hello a, there. We can, uh, this is a crazy story before we close out. You you are cancer survivor heart. Like how many heart attacks you survive? Four heart attacks. How many in the cancer... Prostate cancer. Prostate cancer survivor. What else? Uh, double pulmonary embolism, both lungs. Shit. Bro is bulletproof. He scared the shit out of me before this podcast, I'm be honest with you. Wait, what? doing what? Because he's like, he was like, double pulmonary embolism. Doctor told me I, there was no way I should have made it. And now sometimes if I laugh too hard, I'll pass out and I'm like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm scared to make him. Shit. Right? <laughs> Fuck. You just <laughs> fucking made him laugh. Yeah, like, I know. Thanks for warning the rest <laughs> yeah, of us, I asshole. Mean, I thought you no guys heard. Me. No, no. I've been, do- I've been dwelling on this. <laughs> Mix just like it's gonna be a surprise for the boys. Now, the grandma is a twenty-year veteran Navy vet. Also, she's a corpsman. She's That's a corpsman. awesome. She's yeah. a corpsman. That's how I met her. What? Like you were just both deployed the same area, no, spit in that um, game? I was at Naval Hospital, San Diego. I was stationed there with security and we were doing mountain ops up at Julian. And my carabiner snapped. I fell down, broke my left ankle. Didn't realize it because I had my combat boots on. One more injury and that you're telling us about. And it's the office chair I that fucked you up. Drove all the way back, <laughs> was in the shower. Look down, and my ankle's about this big around. So I said, okay. So I put a towel around me, walked downstairs, and I said, is there a corpsman in the house? Well, I'm at a naval hospital, and they're all corpsmen there. There's this good-looking little blonde in navy blues over here sitting down, and she turns around, and she goes, I'm a corpsman. Yeah, and she gave you Motrin and dry socks. No. <laughs> I, I asked her to look at my ankle. She came over and she goes, you need to go to the ER. She drove me up to the ER and we've never been apart since. No doubt. No, no. What was your first apart. date other than the ER? Um, after I got out of the cast, I took her to... Uh, Luigi's, which is an Italian restaurant there in San Diego. Yeah. And you're like, babe, come here, I got this. How long yeah. did you wait to propose? God, uh, this is like, this is old school. I'm like, hey, hey. That was 84. She went to school up in Oakland. I was transferred to Guam, and I called her on the phone. I said, hey, you going to marry me or what? A romantic man, I see. And, <laughs> and they say romance is dead. There, there was silence. Silence. And I, I said, That's a delay. Are you going to marry me? <laughs> and, and she said, One, two, I, I have three. to go. And I called her a second time. You're persistent, too. And she says, I got to go. It's double time. I called her a third time. She was waiting for the third time. 
she said, okay, yeah, after I get out of school. So she got out of school. I took leave. We went to Vegas, got married there, and then went home for Christmas. That'd be a lesson to you kids. Grandpa gaming doesn't miss. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just love like third oh, kids, times the kids these days do everything over the phone, <laughs> over text. Always in one. <laughs> <laughs> answering the first one's like, hello, who is this? You're like, Guam. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to marry me? <laughs> who is this? <laughs> well, they say kids these days, oh, they do everything over the phone, over text, 40 years ago. <laughs> like, yo, bitch, you want to marry me or not? <laughs> yo, what's up? Hit me That's back. awesome. <laughs> oh, you just made me think of something. You know, oh, the, no. the, first, <laughs> the first game we ever played, the first game I ever was introduced to was a mail game, a, a board game that you mail your move, movements in, based here in Texas in 73. Wait, you'd mail 74. Your... Yeah. This is the slowest game ever. But it took a long time to win. I, I bet. Yeah. That was not satisfying. That was my first <laughs> first basically inner, you know, computer game because you had, they mail, mail you out, uh, you know, where the sides would be and then you, you mail your moves and mail it back two weeks later you get the answers. That is like the smoke signal equivalent of turn-by-turn -turn combat. Yeah. yeah. It's playing yeah. chess like that. Yeah. That was Before. my introduction to gaming. This is the OG gamer. Holy shit. Right? <laughs> God, you have had a life. It has been... <laughs> an honor having you on <laughs> well, with all I, appreciate it. I appreciate it this has been one of the most wholesome episodes we have had as a group yeah for sure the i, I can't wait to see the audience who are like they didn't say any of the other words <laughs> 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 they this behaved is, kind of we've kind of behaved this podcast yeah we were like, we behaved the appropriate amount yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You guys are great. You guys are great. Thanks for having me. Thank That's you. A no, this dude, is awesome. You're great. <laughs> yeah. This has been a pleasure, dude. No, that. you. You're <laughs> breathtaking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're hot. <laughs> no, just learning about your military experience, your gaming experience, how you proposed to your wife. <laughs> like, all of it is just so amazing. Long and distance. your family. Did your family, just your grandpa, like, it, this has been truly an honor, and it, it, it's a pleasure to have flown you out and experience well, so, this. I'm so much happier. I can't it, wait to interrupt it with Adam and Eve ads. <laughs> <laughs> it was... It was... It was are you serious? I don't, I don't know. know. Are we? One, <laughs> one's on this week. It depends on what's the, ad, the chart on our ad table. <laughs> Sorry, so say no. love is dead. <laughs> hey, you want to marry me? <laughs> really, though, your videos were funny just, you know, reading the caption of, like, veteran dunking on 12-year-olds. But now that I know that you've lived... <laughs> As much as you have, like you were mailing in your moves for video games in the 70s. You're a Navy diver, a rescue swimmer. You've been attacked with a machete. You've had your neck broken by an office chair, and you're still <laughs> good enough <laughs> to fucking just shit. I knew shit. that, but I should have never opened my mouth about that. <laughs> and you're still good enough to just shit on kids at video games is incredible. Yeah. All right. Let's give it to them. <laughs> Cody, close us out. You Thank mean. you for coming to the Unsubscribe Podcast. I was joined today by Eli Double Fat, the fat electrician, Grandpa Gaming. Grandpa, did I get it right? I didn't oh, say yeah. the wrong one, yeah. right? Okay, 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 okay. Brandon Herrera and myself, Donut Operator, thank you so much for coming out. Please check out the next part of our podcast that is going to be on our Patreon. I'm Grandpa Gaming, where do we find you? Grandpa Gaming. Dot .gg is my website. You can find me on Kick, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. How do you spell it? Because you do have a special way of spelling it. G-R-N-D-P-A-G-A-M-I-N-G. -G. All right. Let's give it to him one more time. One more time. Thank, Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Appreciate you. <laughs>